Happy Throwback Thursday, patrons. <laughs> uh, Dave here, and Allie's here, too. Hi, how's it going? And we're going to commentate on the How Dave Spent His Summer series. Ah, uh, uh, yes. And there's my mountain man beard and the <laughs> charcoal ice cream stains on my shirt. That was a good, good day. Yes, this, this was the um, third of these vlogs we filmed, even though it was the first one we released because it was the one that I thought would most grab the attention of my audience. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. But yes, we shot this uh, the same day as the uh, Lucy Sparrow, uh, Sparrow Mart one, uh, and in between those we went to Little Damage for some charcoal ice cream, hence the stains on my shirt. It was delicious. I also wasn't sure if I was really going to do a vlog at this point, I just was collecting the footage in case, and that's also why not all the footage is shot very well, because... It was more important just to get... You took that picture. That yes, was on indeed. your phone. It was more important just to capture it than to capture it well in the moment. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it was just you were worried that the window was passed because you had spent almost a month with me back back east to kind of help me get packed up, that you were just kind of concerned that it was going to be just like, shoot, 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 nothing would be worth throwing up, and then... Yeah, th this, was, this was... This uh, was... I always want to call back this number. Um, <laughs> yes. This was the last week of the exhibit, and, uh, you know, I shot the intro in case there was a salvageable vlog in it, which, you know, it turned out there was, but I mostly just was getting B-roll in case I needed it for Blitz Travifornia stuff. Okay, this trash can bit coming up, uh, I went on this rant about trash can. I didn't have as much footage of the trash cans in the exhibit as I thought I did when I wrote this little rant. And I didn't have time to go back to the park and get new footage of the trash cans in the park. I remembered there was a Disneyland special, like a, make, a Disneyland mm -hmm. history special, yeah. that f spent some time focusing on the trash cans. I was like, I'll get footage from that. I know that special's on YouTube, but I can't remember what that special's called. Of course, of course. But I remember that George Lucas was one of the people interviewed in that special. So I went to IMDb, looked up George Lucas, uh -huh. went down to himself, and just like... Command F searched for Disneyland uh -huh. and was able to find the special, so I was able to get that footage of uh, of the trash cans, that professional trash can footage. So this was while uh, I was visiting you on the East Coast before, uh, right before helping you move out here. Yes, indeed. And we were taking a road trip up to New York to see some friends all along the way, and we stumbled across the Turkey Hill experience and just stopped on a whim. Yeah. I had no idea this existed. Uh, I went to college in Pennsylvania, but not really this part of Pennsylvania. We were on roads I was unfamiliar with, so to see this tourist trap, uh, I was surprised, and I was like, okay, honey, we were going to stop for a restroom soon anyway. We have to stop here, Absolutely, right? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And we, we do both share an enjoyment of potentially tacky, cheap tourist traps. Absolutely, yes. Um, Okay, this Hershey Park footage I later used in another vlog when I had nothing else to do that week. <laughs> that was all footage from uh, when I was visiting Pennsylvania in 2012, uh, visiting my then-girlfriend, who broke up with me very shortly after that. <laughs> but hey, yeah, you benefited from that. Uh, hey, I'm not complaining. <laughs> yes. We didn't really uh, spend a whole lot of time watching any of these uh, film presentations. Like, we sort of just yeah. sat in for a few minutes. Probably if the audio was playing better, I would have tried to film the whole thing so I could potentially riff them later. Yeah, but, but it seemed like the, um, like, similarly with us, some of the traps we, tour traps we've seen, like, the, the audios were shorting out pretty hardcore, so, like, you couldn't hear anything. Yes. But also, like, that space was just so large and uninsulated that you would just, all you could hear was just kill, kids screaming. Like Oh, like, oh yeah, it definitely feels like a factory that's converted into a museum and i'm sure it is even though as far as i can tell it was never the actual turkey hill yeah, factory yeah. yeah but you know all in all like this was kind of such like a fun cute little side you know side stop like especially if you're heading over to the uh national watch and clock museum in columbia pennsylvania yes which we uh tried to stop at afterwards because you know someone who works there but it was closed yeah. so uh we did not go to the national watch and clock museum but uh Maybe next time. Maybe. <laughs> Again, so many interesting, to, especially out there in, you know, Lancaster, so many quirky homegrown experiences in addition to the corporately owned experiences. Of course, of course. This was the event that you were really pushing to go to. Uh, this was, I've been waiting to see this for almost two years now, and the fact that this happened to be on the day that we ended up going to see the That's From Disney really, I thought, was 
beautiful timing. Yes, it worked out very nicely. Uh, other than finding parking in downtown LA, that did not work out nicely. That's always an extra exercise in futility anytime you try it. So I think we went, we tried three different garages and the first two were completely full. Yeah. And uh, I mentioned on camera our terrible sunburns, which don't show up on camera as bad as they were in real life because... This was uh, a day or two after we went down to Huntington Beach for the day yeah. and got majorly sunburned. You still have this pretzel I that do. you got. Bob still, well, Bob is now living in the garage as we try to find a new apartment. But uh, yeah, <laughs> he was on my desk smiling at me every day since I brought him back home last year. And what a sweet little pretzel boy he is. Yes, indeed. You still have your, uh, your Coke can. I still have my, uh, yeah, I, I, I still have my Pepsi-free felt can which again m much like that's for disneyland i wasn't sure if this would end up sustaining a vlog so i also had the bonus like y you know again when you work on youtube you uh mm -hmm. you, you figure out how everything can be used for content not necessarily because the content's going to make you money but because then you can write off what you're doing uh, yes indeed <laughs> so you can write it off on taxes okay. so I thought even if this doesn't turn out to be uh, a usable vlog on its own, I'll be able to come up with gags to use some of this B-roll for. Allie's still here, even though she's not in this one. Hello. I had to network this day, so I let Dave go hang out with Tony and everybody to do the thing. Well, I didn't let you. You guys were going, you're planning on it anyway, so. But you had, uh, th this was, I want to say, your first day of. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it was like of, of meeting everybody for the program that I was doing and uh, meeting like Grant Park people as well that uh, I'm working with now, so. Yeah, so it was, it was a big, important day for you. So, uh, since you had to be downtown and I had to be in Hollywood, and I thought, well, nobody wants to find parking in Hollywood, but you were getting a parking voucher for, uh, for where you had to be. Yeah. So, I figured, okay, we'll just leave the car there and I'll take a lift into Hollywood, mm -hmm. which ended up being uh, significantly more expensive than I was hoping. Yeah. And it, it probably would have been cheaper ultimately to find parking in Hollywood, but it also probably would have been stressful to find parking in Hollywood considering how early we had to get there to be in the VIP line. Yeah, yeah. This actually, the day we're recording this is one year to the day after we shot this. Oh, yes, <laughs> yeah. yes. Uh, but you're hearing this a few weeks later. Um, there's uh, Michael from the Weird Alphabet podcast. Uh, I didn't know him at the time, but obviously, like, of course he was there. Mm -hmm while we're all just singing along to the Spotify playlist. We got wonderful views of everyone's back during the ceremony. You know, looking at this now, Al does have a really nice butt. Like, he obviously has <laughs> takes good care of himself. It's like very, it's well-formed. That's accordion's ass. <laughs> this was my second time seeing Tom Lennon in person, because I met him at a Spontaneation show he was the guest in, oh, okay. where he signed my copy of uh, writing movies for fun and profit ah uh, yes yes oh yeah uh, are, are we going to talk about that at some point or uh or waiting until after the blitz yeah uh, later okay okay i'm i'm secret projects folks secret projects it's not that exciting a project i'm <laughs> I'm, I'm 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 working on a i'm brainstorming a project that is basically tricking myself into being productive uh it will not be interesting which is why the paid customers get to hear about it first <laughs> My biggest criticism about this vlog, as the person in it, is... Um, Lack of meat? Yes, uh, obviously <laughs> I don't like things that you're not in. I'm, I, I much prefer things that have my fiancé in them. Mm -hmm. um, but my biggest self-criticism about this vlog is that this was when the cyst on my forehead was at its most oh, swollen. Yeah. So there's shots of me where I'm just like, why is there a fucking golf ball on my head? And nobody's commented on it, so either everybody is very polite or legitimately nobody notices that except for me. But I can't unsee it. Maybe. Uh, but people are too distracted by Al's back here. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is, the beard balanced it out, though. That's the thing. When, when my beard was shaggy, it, it drew attention away from the forehead. Uh, Rennie and Luke. Yes, and there's Mike in the background again. So many friends, so many friends. Hello, humans. What are we doing today? Hello, friends. I should point out another cheat, uh, is that that photo was not taken during the summer. Yeah. <laughs> That's a photo of the pier at Huntington Beach, but if you look close on the pier, you can see the uh, snowflake decorations mm -hmm. on the lamp posts uh, 
from Christmas decor. So, but that was actually a picture I took uh, a, like a, a year or so earlier and texted to you while you were complaining about the snow back east. And yeah. I, I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> Here's where I am. <laughs> it's like, how dare you, sir? They, they always have at least one or two out on the floor at all time, but it's like conservation stuff. So they have to you know, bring them in for restitching and cleaning and like... Gee, Ali, are you some sort of expert as to what it's like working at the Smithsonian? Mm, I might be, I might be. <laughs> <laughs> you have way more interesting... Uh, things you could talk about than I do on camera, and yet you're not the one with the YouTube channel. <laughs> For now, no, no, just, no, no, <laughs> it's not happening. You heard it here first, it's definitely happening, <laughs> Allie's definitely starting a channel soon, definitely 100%. <laughs> definitely can only be seen if you subscribe to Doc on Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> You'll just hijack my channel whenever you want. Exactly. I mean... That oh, checks no, out. No. I, it'll be Patreon only. Like, all the episodes <laughs> will be on there. <laughs> like, <laughs> a Patreon bonus show that's just your stuff. Exactly. I thought you said we weren't going to monetize our marriage. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I didn't say that. <laughs> oh, right. I, ha I had to promise that. Be because the park tubers proposal is I promise we won't get married at Disneyland and I promise I won't be monetizing our wedding. <laughs> I remember this scene existed from Muppet Babies and was hoping it was on YouTube. What I didn't remember was that this was the first Stan Lee cameo. Oh, wild. I don't know. He probably cameoed on other things before, but this was a pre-MCU Stan Lee cameo. Like, yeah, yeah. I remembered the scene of Rolf as Spider-Man. I didn't remember that Stan Lee was in that scene. Mm -hmm. And it very much was the precursor to Into the Spider-Verse, where there's so many Spider-Men. The other exhibit that was going on at the Skirball at the same time was the Leonard Bernstein exhibit. Yeah, yeah, that was a fun one. Uh, which we did not film just because it was less relevant to my audience's interests. But it was relevant to my personal interests. So. Yes. <laughs> then again, I, I did a video on the Music Man. Why can't I do a video about West Side Story? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so this was the 3D space, and uh, we shot this one after we shot the other one uh the other fall because this was uh a few days this was the saturday after thanksgiving i think i think so yeah. that we came down and uh we kind of found this randomly we, if I remember correctly. we stumbled across this by accident because what we were uh looking at was a rummage sale at the echo park film center which yeah, was which yeah. was uh, on the same block and then we saw a sign for, you know, 3D Monsters exhibit, and we were like, yeah, let's, <laughs> l l let's check that out. And I didn't have my camera at the time, so all I thought was, okay, we have to come back here with the camera. Mm -hmm. uh, and then this was our last chance. This was the last day of the exhibit, so I was like, okay, yeah. let's get the camera and come back. So, so yeah, that's uh, Eric who runs the... Uh, runs the 3D space. A s absolute sweetheart. Like, I've seen him a few more times for, like, other events, and he has just been super kind, like, every time. Like, he, yes, he's a, a very delightful, very passionate fellow about the history and development of 3D. He was just a wealth of information. Like, uh, you probably saw that there's also a deleted scenes video for this just because he just had so many stories to tell about the history and everything. I, I want you to convince him to do a YouTube just like documentary on it. Like I'm con like he needs to do it because he is just fascinating as a person. I'm sure there's I'm sure he's been in documentaries about this topic and I'm sure yeah he has enough to do another one. I'm also keenly aware that so much of this is lost on video because like so i had to put one of the lenses of the 3d glasses over the camera just to get any of the video to mm -hmm. to read on video yeah so you know you really needed to see this stuff in person to get the full effect uh which is why i i, I honestly hope the 3d space finds like a permanent home to do like a full-on 3d museum oh absolutely i know they've done like they've presented exhibits at other museums and yeah, stuff. Yeah, like one of the biggest things I think they've done recently was uh, at the Big Art Museum in LA, the uh, LACMA. Um, they did a whole, th they, they partnered with them for a 3D ex exhibition that I ran through and I didn't spend enough time there, but it was absolutely stunning. Mm -hmm. And uh, they actually, the last day of it, they had a showcase of 3D films, including one of the more recent ones, like uh, done in the classic 3D style called What the Butler Saw, which weirdly starred David Arquette, but it's like a drama. That is wild. Yeah, yeah. I would love to do a deep dive on William Castle, who I didn't realize until like 
using this footage looks so much like John Mahoney. He really does. <laughs> like we really missed the window on like like rest I'm in peace. Really yeah, rest in peace John Mahoney. We we missed the window on him in a William Castle biopic. Um but yeah, fatten up John Cena for a couple of years. I think we might. Be- <laughs> <laughs> I never really thought about what actually went into uh, converting a comic book to 3D. And I think as a kid, I tried to draw a 3D comic by just holding a red and blue pen at the uh, red and blue pen at the same time and drawing uh-huh. with both pens. And of course, it didn't work because they weren't spaced properly. Yeah, but I mean, again, you know, in, in kid logic, that makes perfect sense about yeah. how to do it. Yeah, M- much like my many, you know, it's right up there with my many failed attempts at doing stop motion as a kid, which I, which I think everyone. Everyone who had a video camera at a certain age and had a certain mindset tried doing stop motion mm-hmm. films and then ran out of patience when their video camera wouldn't actually allow them to just capture a single frame. Of course, of course. And here it is, the infamous <laughs> Bravo Land. <laughs> the true star of this show, of this series. The true star of anything I've ever done. I, I fully expected this to be not film worthy i thought it was just like yeah "Yeah, that's cute it looks kind of like a western thing Mm -hmm. but i thought inside it would just be like a cracker barrel or something like that yeah like at best a cracker barrel i was expecting more to be like one of those like small town malls like that little mall tucked away in claremont or yeah yeah or uh there's a mall in vermont that's basically in in an old converted mill like I, I was expecting it to be one of these things where it's just inside it's just like, oh, it's shops and restrooms and that's that's all. But it, it just kept being more and more inexplicable. And we were like, okay, someday we're going to come back here and do a video about this place. And we weren't even thinking it would be on this trip. Mm-hmm. It was just then on our way back on Friday, right after Thanksgiving, it was time to stop for gas again. And we happened to be at the same exit. Like we weren't planning on this. It was just like, Oh, it's the Kettleman city exit again. Well, I guess since we're here again, let's just do it. Yeah. Opportunities here. Let's just spend an hour or two walking around filming and making fun of things. So many weird little antiques, like uh, admittedly, admittedly, these things we're making fun of here aren't, Kettleman City exclusive. Like, these, these aren't Bravo Farms I, things. These are just old things. Yeah, and it's like, I, I, every time I go on Etsy now and I look up, like, bottle openers, because sometimes, sometimes I just do, they, those just are, like, a thing that people buy, and they're in the weirdest shapes, including that one, yeah. I, I never understood, like, the naked cherub aesthetic that so many people push for in their the, own backyards the and stuff. The humble figure love is type of, like, nude kid thing. Yeah, exactly. Oh god, this shit. These guys, yeah, this is very clearly a a rip off of the animal heads from the Country Bear Jamboree, but with a person there too. Mm-hmm. And the way these animatronics were just moving, and you could hear like the pistons going, like the, like yeah. the way they hissed when they moved, even before you put the dollar in. I'm now slightly convinced that the dude was like a, like a broken animatronic from Knots that just somehow made its way up there. That they just bought off of Knots. Yeah. It's very possible. I mean, he's like a spirit Halloween level animatronic. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did later while we were in another part of the building, someone else had put a dollar in and we heard them doing a completely different scene where they were singing like Electric Avenue or something. Yes. And first off, I don't love that, that you have to keep putting in money to see all the two minute scenes. Like, like... I, I'm I'm all for having different shows. I'm I'm all for variety of experience, but when they're that short to have them each cost a dollar, it's like yeah. no, no. It's like this is unnecessary. But yeah, we also on our on our first uh time there on the way up, we saw these guys but didn't realize they were animatronics. We thought they were just decor. And it was on our way back that we were like, Oh, there there's a slot here <laughs> to put money in. Yeah, and, and they they release air or steam or something yeah. like that in a very noticeable way so you just kind of you like suddenly will just hear like a gust of something and then like see the head just dip down yeah which i know is a common thing with animatronics even when they're turned off they they shift around a little bit and yeah. you know that's just part of the mechanics okay. um i will say that if they ever end up shooting a five night at freddy's film they need to do it here <laughs> five five nights in bravo yeah <laughs> also uh when the chickens were clucking in the mood here 
I say, what is this, the Glenn Feather Band? And I really should have said, what is this, the Hen Miller Band? <laughs> and I apologize for that oversight. You know, noting, knowing that your audience is mostly other 80-year-old men, I feel like, you know, they'll, they'll forgive you this time. 80-year-old but... men who love dad puns. Yeah. That, that's my demographic. It, it's always fun uh, when we do these together, when we approach places like this together, because, like, I approach from a theme park headspace, you approach from a museum headspace. Yeah, yeah. And uh, there's there's a lot of overlap in those headspaces, but uh, oh, absolutely too. It's like, well, I don't know if we'll be shooting something for the, this, um, but we're going the Chapman Museum, which is not which is close to where you live, has a thing of Mary Blair stuff going on, which I really am excited to go take a look at. Yes, and 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 I'm hoping, uh, yeah, we'll be able to go check that out. Maybe by the time you're hearing this, you've already seen a vlog about it. Maybe you haven't. Smart money's on you haven't, <laughs> just knowing how I work. Yeah. So yeah, we, we came back later and uh, did all these did all these effects. Yeah. And uh, the one we thought was coolest was the uh, the mill stamp, which, you know, yeah. was arguably the least technologically advanced because it like wasn't an animatronic or anything. It was, but like, I think it just was the one that we liked the most because it had an air of authenticity about it. Yeah, there was something kind of weirdly charming about it, but that, that one... It, it it actually felt like, yes, this is, like, part of this mill experience. Yeah. Unlike the uh, crow puppet on an animatronic body. I was just talking like a Teen Girl Squad cartoon! Exactly, yeah. All right, thanks for joining us on these commentaries, and uh, join us next week for a different Throwback Thursday. Who knows right. what it'll be? Ooh. The only thing we do know is that I won't be on it, so. <laughs> Unless it's deleted scenes from something you were in. <laughs> we'll find out.